do you maybe recognize this sweater? If you've been watching me for a while, then you'll probably know that this is one of my most loved and well-worn vintage sweaters that I've had since I got it. But that also means that I am a little bit worried about wearing this one thin as it is an original knit from I'm guessing the 1950s and 1960s. So I've decided that today we are going to copy this sweater stitch for stitch so that I will have an exact duplicate copy of this vintage sweater that I can wear to my heart's content without being worried that I'm going to wear it out. In order to create an exact duplicate, let's go ahead and start by taking a closer look at this unique dot stitch pattern to see exactly what is going on here and how we can best duplicate this entire cardigan from scratch. I'm so excited to get started on remaking this sweater and writing up the pattern for it. So the first thing that I thought I would do is that I would pull up two of the pattern books that I have that remind me very, very much of the pattern of the sweater that I have. So this is Bernat, book number 55 from 1957. And if you ask me, the pattern on this cardigan on the front looks super, super similar to my own. And what I want to do is I want to knit up a swatch of it to compare to the sweater that I own, as well as this book. This is also Burnett. This is book number 66. My guess is late 50s, early 60s. But the pattern on the back cover also seems to have that very familiar pattern in terms of the diamonds and a little bit more similar collar to my cardigan than the one on this front does and it also has the same sleeve length. Let me go swatch them and then let's discuss on how close the swatches are from these two patterns to the original sweater I own. Okay, are you ready to go on this sample adventure with me? So here is the first sample that I knit. This is directly from this pattern book. And it turns out that the third color, which is the white or cream in my sample, is kind of the border or delineation between the puffy dots. I noticed when looking at the original cardigan that it definitely did not have this effect at all. So I decided to do the second test with just two colors, but I quickly realized that this was also not correct. So I was thinking like, what if I did this this sample again, but did the white rose in my back chosen background color, which would either be the red or the black. So when I went back and I did a sample exactly like that, all the stitch counts matched. The back looks exactly the same as the back on the original sweater. So I think I've worked out the pattern of this cardigan. Basically this pattern, but we're not using the contrast white to go in between the dots. We are keeping that in the main color, background color. I think now we need to work out the shaping. I think for that, I'm going to pick up this book with this pattern a little bit more. And we're gonna work off of this to create that shape. Okay, here we are. I've made quite a bit of progress with knitting this cardigan up. It might be a bit of a jump of a head for you. And just as a reminder, here is the original. So I just kind of want to hold up the original. We have the ribbing ending at about the same spot from the cast on edge to where we change. And then each one of the colors is matching up pretty well to the ones that I have here. I, this vintage sweater is a lot more well-loved than the freshly knit one. So like it doesn't really have the same bobbly texture as mine. So it feels like probably this one got stretched horizontally and vertically over the years as it was worn. So we are just knitting up the back now and I will be just continuing the same pattern until we reach the underarm section. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to go. Let's get to knitting until we get to the underarm because that's that's where it starts to get interesting. I was able to do a lot of the stitch counting up until the underarm, and I think that the underarm is where we have to do a little bit of interpretation because it's hard for me to tell. Let's get let's get to knitting.
gonna interrupt myself really quick right here and let you all know that, as some of you might have guessed already by this point, because I did open up the call for test knitters a little while ago here on the channel, I am releasing this as my first graded sweater pattern ever. I'm very, very excited. It'll be from sizes 32 to 62, and I have opened up the pre-orders for the pattern right now. So the pattern in its entirety will go live on December 1st. However, if you go through my Ravelry link, then you can pre-order the pattern now. Just so that you all know, it means that when you pre-order it on Ravelry, you will get a link to a downloadable PDF that'll just be a placeholder. And on midnight of December 1st, you should get a notification or an email update, or you can just go into your Ravelry library and re-download an updated pattern, and that update will be the full pattern on December 1st. I'll also have it go live on Etsy on December 1st. If you want a slight discount on any of my pattern sales, then feel free to check out my Patreon. Different tiers have different levels of discounts. Okay, so check the links in the description down below. If it's before December 1st and you want to pre-order the pattern for this particular cardigan, otherwise let's keep going on working on this exact copy first. I worked on this sweater on and off for a few months, so at the time that I went from working on the majority of the back to working on the front piece, I was kind of ill, so I didn't end up having a lot of great footage from that, but you can kind of see the results. So I've knit all the way up to the underarms, and then you have to split apart for both the left front and the right front and the back. So here you can see I am holding the left front of the cardigan. So when you cast on for the cardigan, at least the way that it was originally constructed, you are knitting the entire circumference of the cardigan. You're just knitting it back and forth because it's knit flat and you want it to open and it's not a steaked cardigan. So here's where I figured out exactly how to knit the front left side. And once again, I am copying as closely as I can the original stitch counts from my vintage sweater to make it match as close as possible. The next step is I have to knit a matching right front on this side right here that should match the left front that we've already knit and a back piece that goes in between, shaping for the armholes all the while. We're done with the body of the cardigan copy. I'm slightly concerned. I started out at a pretty good gauge and tension in comparison to the original sweater and this looks and feels slightly more scrunched up. One thing I have to keep in mind, and I might have mentioned before, is that the bobbles on the original have flattened out fully, and if I were to stretch this material out to how they flattened out on the original one that I have, the vintage one, we do get a much better size that would probably fit me <laughs> a little bit more. I could also sew up the shoulder seams to test that out a little bit and test out the fit. I actually might do that. That's not a bad idea. Before I move forward though, um, I you might see all these little papers flying about. Those are all the notes that I made while I was knitting this. I started off knitting this next to my computer the whole time so I could make notes in my Excel spreadsheet, but I then wanted to take it other places so I just made notes of it wherever I was sitting and knitting, and I need to translate that into the pattern so I can make a good note of it. Next steps, I'm probably going to sew up the shoulders and just test the fit real quick. Then I want to start on the sleeves. The sleeves are going to be knit flat. The original sleeves are also knit flat, so I'm just going to copy that style. I do want it to be a one-on-one -on -one remake. Let's show up the shoulder... show up. <laughs> Let's sew up the shoulder seams, and then I will show you what that looks like, and then we'll continue on to knitting the arms, or the arms, the sleeves. Sometimes I say arms, and with our I mean sleeves with that. I think I get it because in German, uh, an arm is an arm, which is the same thing, and a sleeve is an ammon. So it's like arm with a few extra letters. So I think in my brain, that's just why it works that way. So yeah. Sl shoulders first, sleeves next. Okay, I should <laughs> show up. Hard to say sewed up sometimes. I guess I'm trying to say like sewed up shoulder seams, and that is tough for me. I sewed up the shoulder seams and this is what we're looking like. It does look a little petite in the front, but if you look at the back, I think we're looking quite good. It does have like, do you guys remember those shirts that scrunched up really small and when you wore it, they stretched out? It kind of feels like that's what's happening with these bobbles a little bit. So I do think that this needs to be blocked for sure to relax the tension and the bobble slightly. And then that will make this look a little bit nicer across the back. The front, uh, it's curling under significantly, so I would get a lot more 
distance like coverage out of this if it's uncurled. Now that this is done, let's move on to the sleeves. So the cardigan's arms or sleeves. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just got back from three weddings in a week. There's construction going on. I don't feel or look my best, but I really want to knit on this cardigan, but I didn't want to keep going before updating you all. So here's where I've gotten to on the sleeves already, which is quite a bit of progress. I am knitting these sleeves two at a time so that I don't end up with second sleeve syndrome, which has happened to me a lot in the past. I got the cast on numbers and counts from the existing cardigan, I try to match it as closely as I could from the counts that I could see of the stitches that were there. And I have been increasing at exactly those same intervals that I can tell. I think I've increased as much as I need to, and now I just need to make it all the way up to the shaping for the sleeve head portion. And let's keep knitting. I'll try to film a little bit of myself knitting, but honestly, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just wanting to wrap myself up in a cozy blanket with a nice show on and knit for the rest of the evening, so it might not be the most. <laughs> Is there a ghost in this shot? Because it keeps on wanting to focus, like my camera wants to focus right there instead of on me. So I think we have, there might be a ghost right here who really wants the spotlight at the moment. <laughs> but in any case, I will keep you as up to date as I can as I keep on knitting on these sleeves. been so close to finishing these sleeves and I'm just not getting to the finish line and I think that's because of this mess. <laughs> it just is such a tangle. I'm working with three colors per sleeve so I have six balls that keep on getting wound around each other and they're annoying me and I'm gonna undo this absolute knot that they got into from my knitting but I'm at least gonna separate the balls for each sleeve into two separate Tupperware containers so that those two don't get mixed up with each other because that is so frustrating to me. <laughs> Okay, these sleeves are off my needles. Now I guess I have most of the pieces together and I am going to, what am I gonna do? Set the sleeves in? Yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll see you when the sleeves are in place because I, I don't, that part for me is really annoying. So I don't really want to film it to be honest. So I'll see you when the sleeves are finished and ready to be shown. The sleeves are sewn on to the cardigan. All that is left is the weaving in of so many ends and adding the front panel for the button, like the button band. That's what the name is, the button band, as well as the collar. But this is what the cardigan looks like right now. I'm a little worried. I do know the button band is going to um, close up this space a little bit and that this is curled under slightly, but I'm worried that I didn't give it quite enough width across the front. I decided not to knit the button band at the same time as the main body of my knitting. Now have to knit the button band and either sew it on afterwards, which is I think how the original vintage piece did it. I don't think I'm gonna be writing the pattern like this. And the other nice thing about that is too, is that they did what looks like a sewing machine buttonhole. I don't think I'm gonna do that either. I think that I'm going to knit my buttonholes in and I'll be following the placements of what they did for my buttonholes as well. I knit the button band. So this is the side of the button band that will receive the buttons so it doesn't have any buttonholes in it. Now I'm going to knit the side that needs the buttonholes 
Do you know what I just found out? The button band looks beautiful. A Nutella. What do you think, Nutters? You look so pretty. I'm glad you like it too. Very cute. 10 out of 10. For the choice of buttons, I went back to my vintage button collection and I managed to find buttons that were the exact same style as the original, as you can see here, but unfortunately they were both the wrong size, the wrong color, and I didn't have enough. So I had to go to a backup button and I chose this one to finish off the sweater and then it was time to do the final reveal. <laughs> And there we have it, the finished copy of the cardigan. In the meantime, it's been a bit since I finished this version of the cardigan because I've been working on the pattern for a while, so we have popped a button. So I have to go ahead and find that button and replace it again. I've just pinned it in place for now. Firstly, I am so happy by my yarn choice. This is Knit Picks Swish DK. Uh, the links will be down in the description. The colors aren't the most exact match to the original. So it's a close match, but not an exact match. I think from here on, I'm going to be re-knitting up a few more patterns in different types of yarn and different colorways. So I'm going to see if we can get either closer to the original or get some fun color choices done. As I am writing this up as a pattern, there are a few things that I'm gonna be taking from this particular knit. Now, I did do my best to get the gauge as close as I could and the stitch counts as exactly as I could. The original fits me with positive ease, so there is room. This one somehow, I think from the 3D knit, has turned out to be slightly negative ease. So I think, especially across the bust, it's stretching to fit, so I think I need to add a little bit more room here. The other thing is it's it's really up in my armpit. Now it's, it's not uncomfortable, it's just I want it to be roomier under here, so I think I'm going to increase the length. The style of the button band, I really didn't like sewing that in place, so I'm going to try a different style of button band. So in short, there are quite a few modifications that I want to do before I write this into the final pattern and you will see that over the coming videos. So if you want to see me work on this pattern, knit up another version of this cardigan in a lovely ombre that you might have noticed in a previous video, feel free to subscribe because those will be the videos that are coming out very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye.